How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing very, very well. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate you yeah. taking the time to have a chat. It's um, I, yeah. I love the new album, so I really wanted to have a chat with you about all the all the new music. Thank you. Thanks so much. And uh, I wanted to speak to you about how the last few months have been for you as well, from a, a songwriter's perspective, because I guess doing everything via Zoom hasn't been the easiest experience for you. Mm-hmm. How's that been? Um, it's been, you know, crazy. Like this, I mean, I just feel like we're in some sort of twilight zone right now. <laughs> you know, it's been really crazy to not be on the road, to not be able to tour behind this record. Um, you know, I've been painting, I've been reading a lot, trying to stay creative, doing a lot of Zoom co-writes. So trying to find ways to keep my my head and my heart healthy and happy, you know, yeah. hanging in there. You got the new album, The Dream, that came out earlier this year. And like I say, absolutely adore that album. Gorgeous piece of work. And the reaction that you've had to it from critics and fans everywhere has been really, really amazing to see. So you must have been delighted with how it's been received. I Say that one more time. I said you must have been delighted with how it's been received. Yeah, I totally am. I mean, I made this record from just a place of feeling like, you know, if this was the last record I get, I got to make, I wanted it to be something that I was proud of and something that I believed in. And that was really the bar for me when we were making this record. And um, I had no idea. I hadn't put music out in five years. I had no idea um, how it was going to be received. Um, and I was working at a restaurant when I was making this record. So, you know, I kind of, I remember the day we released it, we just put a song up on Instagram and it just kind of, you know, changed everything for me. It turned, um, it got a lot of people, um, a lot of ears perked on the project. And, um, I got to go out on the road with Marin last year and Brent Cobb and, it really just changed everything for me. So, I mean, yeah, I'm completely surprised and just humbled by the way that this project has um, taken wings and allowed me to quit working at the restaurant and um, be a creative full time, a, you know, a singer songwriter full time. It's been it's been really life changing in that way. Well, you've been very open in other interviews that you've done about the struggles you had in terms of funding the album and how you had to sell a guitar and dip into your savings to fund this album. So when it's such a battle to reach that point, how, how much more special does that make these songs on the album for you? Because for it, a major label artist probably wouldn't go through that struggle. So how much yeah. more important does it feel to you? Yeah, I mean, it makes it so special. Like everything, especially, not that it doesn't when you're on a label but just like when you literally don't have enough money to mix a song or to master a song or to get a player on a song and you are waiting tables to do it it just makes you really intentional about what you're doing and um it wasn't like we had like you know on a label we would have had some sort of budget in place and you know we might not have had to like be as selective with the songs or with the musicians we would have had a little more of um, a safety net to kind of explore some things but we had to be really intentional with the project and it's really bittersweet I mean to get to like you know to, to have just these cash tips mixed in with powdered sugar and beignets and shit and like sitting in my apron and then to like on a Friday night and then to put that in the bank and like be able to afford to hire a utility player on the record and see that money going there or to be able to hire you know a, a photographer to shoot the photos like it was really special and I'm really grateful for that time because doing it myself I just learned so much about you know what it requires from a label and what it requires to just put out a record yourself and to get it off the ground and I think I was really intimidated by the process at first and looking back it's just one of the best learning experiences I ever had so it was really cool. And you've said that this project feels 100% you more than anything you've ever done in the past. And uh, that's both lyrically, melodically, and it kind of showcases what you're all about as a songwriter. So what kind of message did you want to put across with this album? And what did you want to show the world about who you are as an artist? You know, I feel like, I feel like I'll probably always say that it's like your most recent batch of work is always going to feel the most representative of who you are at that time, as it probably should, because, you know, that's just where you're at in life. But 
with this project, it felt different. It felt very, very honed in on my journey as a songwriter and as a dreamer um, from the heartland to Nashville and my experience over the last 12 years of chasing this one dream, you know? And I feel like you can see those vulnerabilities, you can see that rawness, you can hear me um, starting very brokenhearted, you can see me trying to find myself again, trying to become settled and more rooted in the heartland, kind of going back to, uh, you know, the wide-eyed, naive, blonde girl that I was at 17 when I moved here. And then, you know, flip the record over to Janice. It's a little bit deeper. It's a little more of, um, you know, this this mental process of me trying to realize what um, this dream was meaning to me and what I wanted it to mean to me. And then, um, you know, ending on living the dream, which is just the realization that, like, you know, whether I'm waiting tables or, um, you know, able to be touring full time and making records, like, Getting to create is the dream to me, and that's the reason that I'm in it. So I feel like this story um, definitely told, uh, or this record definitely told a cohesive story, and um, it was my story. And, um, you know, Black Sheep was kind of just me putting together a handful of songs that I'd written and that I loved. And I feel like the dream has you know, a common thread and story woven throughout it. So it feels very much like, you know, very me and very much my story in Nashville. And you announced a, a few months ago that you've partnered with uh, Big Loud and Songs and Daughters as well, Nicole Gellin's label. Now, when she announced that label, it was a breath of fresh air because it was so cool to see a label that's so devoted to female artists. Um, so how how has it been for you to be a part of that group and to see that support that she's given? It's been great. I mean, you know, I I try to get away from the male female thing as much as possible. To me, it's just you know, I just love great music because it's great music. I, I'm not really thinking about whether or not it's a male or female, but um, it did feel like a sisterhood on that label. Like it, you know, it feels good to have you know your girl gang and some you know people who kind of know the struggle of how it is to like be a woman and just the realities of trying to navigate country music um but yeah i mean the fit with big loud and songs and daughters just felt so natural i i had been taking so many label meetings and i actually quit taking them because i was becoming very uninspired by it it was like little peek behind the curtain and seeing the Wizard of Oz and you're like wait what like I, I just I felt it didn't feel authentic to what I wanted to do and what I wanted my music to do and I like that Big Loud is very um you know it's it's smaller it's very innovative it's willing to change and adapt to new um stand, industry norms and standards and I just you know, it felt very fresh and very innovative. And that's how the, this record felt to me when I was making it. So it just seemed like the stars kind of aligned. And it's like, I wasn't looking for a label. I'd started my own at that point. And so I really, it was about finding the right partner to me. And when Big Loud and Nicole came along, it just felt like the right partner. That's cool. Cool. And just coming back to the music, you've been putting out some uh, live in studio sessions as well. Um, the latest being Janice at the hotel bar. Um, so how much did you enjoy actually filming those? Because I guess it's a good opportunity for you to actually get with the band for a change. <laughs> yeah, it really is. I mean, it was amazing. Like, it was it was strange because we we did do this early in quarantine. Well, not early in quarantine, but in quarantine and so everyone was wearing masks other than like when we were performing but um it felt so good i mean i'm i'm considering just booking rehearsal spaces and practicing with my band just for the hell of it just because <laughs> i miss playing with them i really do and it, it's really sad to me it's really sad to me that um you know like to just see you know these band members of mine who were planning on being on the road all year, you know, and like they're picking up Uber shifts or working at a restaurant or something. It's just really tough. It's really tough. And, 
those moments where you do get to get together and it's socially distant and everyone feels safe and comfortable and just play music is such a rare like luxury these days and I know we're all counting down the days till we get to go back out and play a show and I don't know when that is gonna be but um I know that we're all really excited about it and it's gonna be really fun <laughs> and the, the latest video like we said that you've released is Janice um, and I wanted to talk to talk to you about working with Laurie McKenna on that track because yeah. I just idolize Laurie McKenna I think he's the one of the greatest songwriters on earth um, yes so from a creative perspective what is Laurie like to get in a writing room with and create magic with? She, she's incredible she's like everything that you would hope that she is I mean she is so humble like she is kind she makes she makes you feel like you know you're no different than her even though she is just so brilliant and um she Sorry, we're getting our dogs because our dogs are being oh. little shitheads this morning. But um, I mean, Lori just, she makes you feel like you deserve to be in the room. And like, that sounds like something anyone should do, but it's not the case. Like, considering how much success she has had, she is so humble and kind. She is literally the song. And she just, she makes you feel good, you know? And, um, she's just a saint. I think she's brilliant. I think she's, I love, she's a, she's a role model to me in both life and song, like to get to go up to Boston and see her, um, being a mom, but also being a songwriter in her, you know, basement studio. It's so cool to me. Well, first she, time I heard Janice on the album, uh, without taking the credit away from you, I instantly thought Laurie McKenna must have had a part in that. So she's got something about every song that she writes, which is Yes. Mr. Laurie McKenna can, can you put your finger on what that is because <laughs> yeah I mean well first of all just her language her language is so Laurie McKenna it's so rich like um she doesn't hold back that's one of the things I love writing about her is you don't have to worry about like is that too much like she's w willing to go there and she's ready to say it if it feels true and I think her sound like whenever I write with her you know, I always want to put my guitar down and I just want her to do the music because I just, she has a way of delivering those really vulnerable lines in like the space and in the, you know, chord structure that just seems so perfectly matched to it. You know what I mean? I think she's so brilliant and she's just a craftswoman and um, she has a magical thing about her. You know, when I go up there, I want the Lori McKenna thing. You know, that's what I'm I'm trying to get. So she's always like, why don't you play guitar, make a work tape? And I'm like, no, <laughs> because I want what you're doing, you know? Well, speaking of top quality songwriters, you also got to write with Brandy on this album as well, on 10 Year Town. Now, she's someone who's been through that song. She's lived it. She's experienced the struggles of Nashville and how hard it is to get to her position. So... How perfect was she to write with on that track? So perfect. I mean, that was the first song we ever wrote together. Wow. And she is someone I worship. I think she's one of my, she's probably one of my favorite, her and Lori are probably like my favorite songwriters 100%. in Nashville. And honestly, beyond Nashville. I, I mostly kind of stick to Nashville, but. Um, and I knew that she had been through that, you know? Cause I remember when she was putting out 10 stories and um, you know, I remember seeing that and it was the coolest thing because it was like Nashville knew this big, this little secret. And, um, and then we got to see it take off. And I know that she had been through the ringer, you know, like just shitty things that happen, especially when you're a chick artist in this industry. But um, so I kind of knew that that idea had to be with her. And um, I walked in the de that day and, you know, Brandy and I sit and talk forever. It's, it's actually surprising that we ever get anything done because <laughs> we just, you know, connect. But especially that day, it was talking about our story and our experience in town and the frustrations. And it felt just so natural. It felt like we were writing it down in a diary. Like it was one of those things where it's like you spit out a line and, 
you know, you follow some, the next person follows it back up. It just felt very natural. And so, um, we actually, we started that song, um, wrote for a few hours, talked mostly, but, um, and then we actually ended up getting back together to finish it. So we had had a little bit to kind of sit on it and think about it. And I don't know, I think I knew it was special the day that we wrote it. It just felt very real and very raw. And I didn't know at that point, like where it was going to land. I didn't have any, any plans to make a record, but when we sat down to make the record, I was like, okay, this has to be on there. And then by the time we finished it, I was like, all right, this is the first song. So. That's perfect. And you also chose a couple of outside songs as well with uh, Chris Stapleton's The Devil Always Made Me Think Twice and Brent Cobb's Loose Strings. How, does the, how do those songs end up on the record and how do you actually get access to a Chris Stapleton right like yeah. that? Um, well, yeah, I mean, so my bar for like recording an outside song is if when I hear it, I'm jealous that I didn't write it. And that was definitely the case with both of those songs. Um, I love Brent Cobb. I think he's an incredible singer songwriter. Um, he just put out a song last Friday that blew my mind. It's super I, I had not heard a song that moved me like that in a long time. And, um, that was kind of the case with loose strings. Like when I heard it, I heard just his work tape. It was just him and a guitar and he has such a unique phrasing and, um, picking like, I was instantly drawn to that, but also the words. I love his language. Um, it feels very real to like what I would say. So I knew I wanted to put loose strings on there. Um, the Stapleton song. So my boyfriend who actually produced this record with me, he worked at Chris's publishing house. So Jake had access to a lot of Chris's catalog and had heard a lot of it, you know, a lot of his songs and stuff. So he brought that song to me because he thought it would be something that I'd love. And sure enough, I did. So we cut that and we wanted it to be just very vibey. We didn't cut it with a click in the band. That's just the band or in the studio. That's just the band like feeding off each other and vibing out on it. But um, I just always love that song. I think the hook is so clever, you know? I think it's so relatable. Hmm. And um, I mean, Chris Stapleton can do no wrong, so. And uh, Hayley, just before I let you go, because I, I could speak to you all day. And I know hey, and we have more time. I totally <laughs> showed up late here, so feel free to take <laughs> as long as you need. But uh, I wanted to speak to you about plans for the UK at some point, because I know you've done a lot of UK press. Um, and would it be something you'd like to do to come and play for us at some point? Oh my God, yes, I would. I mean, especially, I feel like I was talking about this like pre corn I feel like I've been talking about the UK for years now, but I am dying to come there. I have been doing so much with the UK. It already feels like family, and I'm very much looking forward to getting to play my songs over there. I've heard incredible things about the uk everyone said you must have had a lot of friends that have been to the uk and kind of right yeah yeah um i'm i'm good friends with the cadillac three boys and i know they go over there a lot and they're just i've only ever heard great things about uk audiences and um i know everyone over here always looks forward to getting over there and getting to play and so i feel like it's going to be a spiritual experience when i finally get over there i i whenever we get back to shows again. I cannot wait to get there. Well, fingers crossed we can get that sorted sooner rather than later. But mm-hmm. uh, Hayley, thank you so much for doing this today. I appreciate your time. And um, thank you. Yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully, see you on our shores before too long. Yes, definitely. Thank you. I'm sorry I was late. No, no, we said no. Honestly, it's absolutely fine. But thank you for doing this. I, I appreciate you taking the time to do it. And, uh, I appreciate you. Soon, I'm sure. Thank you, Ayla. Thank you.